Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is the Tool of Farts. I'm going to just talk. I'm looking at the Tool of Farts. And the smartest of the human of the tools. Yeah, my second favorite shirt on the day. Third one, when I get one. I don't know what that means. Texas State. Texas State. All right, we'll get you one, old man. So do you feel any older? Not a day older. Just like it was the day before. Nothing changed. And we need to give a shout out to your sister. She had a birthday here not too long ago, too. Yes, she did. Yeah. Did she know anything for her birthday? Not that I know of. At least not with us, anyway. You didn't get an invite either. Then one of your granddaughters had a birthday, too. Yes, she did. Same day as you. Same day, yeah. So give her a shout out. I, I know we all sent her birthday wishes, but. Yeah, that week I was gone to California was a bad week, and I missed dozens. I missed a very good friend I was stationed with in Germany, whose son just graduated Air Force basic training. Didn't get to see him or get to see his son graduate. So yeah, yeah, we really miss you at that. That's the only get together we had for Shannon and Brooke. That we'll tell you that was a, a very fun evening. I really enjoyed watching. See the girls talking to their cousins and, and to the aunt and all calling, you know, everybody the good good meal and uh I'm gonna tell you, Cassie cooks some really good ribs. I'm I don't necessarily eat ribs out too much, except I was gonna bring one home with me, but guess what? I couldn't but, find it. Why don't you like ribs? Well, I like ribs, but they can get kinda of messy sometimes. Yeah, you know, Does it matter? No, no. Well, I, I got one over there. Then when I'm about to get some more, get to find them. Yeah, that's like Granny's Oprah. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but that's right. Oprah never survives the first contact. If you don't get that okra before you get anything else, you ain't going to get nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. I think I've told you all before. I told you once. I told you five times. When she was cooking that liquor, I would open the oven door and pull it out of the room in the grease, the hot grease, and eat that liquor. Yeah, she battered that stuff with cornmeal, put that grease in there, and cooked yeah, it and in the oven. It in the oven like that. It, I've never, never seen anybody ever, four more sets, make open them. Right? Granny can cook now, I'm going to tell you. She she. Well, she had a lot of grits here. Right towards the end there, her biscuits kind of weren't as good as they used to be. She, she'd cook them for a while, then she'd take them out and put them down the, and let them cook up. Uh, but they were good. Her cornbread was good. She, she canned a lot of stuff, and she gave a lot of stuff away, and a lot of people brought stuff over to her, too. She is from that generation, you know, uh, yeah, when you had to the, do those kinds of things. Yeah, and she could so, cook and go anything. And Uncle Ray had a green thumb, too. He could he could uh, pretty much grow anything, and if it was dying, he could fix it. Okay, he was straight line. Yeah, but uh, yeah, his, we just had his sixth anniversary of him passing away on the, a few days ago. I really miss you, Uncle Ray. I miss you, Uncle G. That was a that was a pretty sad year. But in six months, we went from December. To August, we lost your granny, your uncle Gene, and your uncle Ray. Yes, sure was. But what was what was nice to me, uh, you know, I, I posted on Facebook, and all the friends from that area, Seal, and all the people who went to school with him, and all stuff like that. How a lot of them responded by by him and stuff like that. Uh, that was nice. Uh, it speaks volumes about him and the relationship he had with everybody in Seal. Pittsview, Fort Mitchell, in that area. So, Ray was a good old boy. He was. Yeah. So, anyway, did you, did you see that football game Saturday between Georgia Tech and uh, Florida State? No, I did. What did you think about it? You think everybody was thrilled about Georgia Tech? Uh, Coach Saban had the best analysis, I think, of it. He mistakenly thought Florida State was going to have, you know, everything looking the way it did last year. Live transfer players from Alabama down there. I'll tell you what, if I had never known that they had a defensive problem in Georgia Tech, I didn't see it on Saturday, did you? No, I didn't. My defense uh, was in the backfield as much as I you to I tell you, it was a good game, and I, I personally, I wasn't surprised. Everybody 
Georgia Tech's one of those schools that just year in and year out, they just kind of six and down. Yeah, the six and seven wins, you know, type thing. But when you underestimate them, that's when they beat you. You know what? I think they've got the right coach down. I think he's instilling the right mentality, and maybe the athletic director and the university is behind them. And when you got all of those things at work, you can make magic happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's one thing I like about college sports and high school sports. You can talk trash all day long. But you got to produce. And if that other team's not buying into it, it hey, I'll do you good. Another good example was the Bernie, that Bernie Little League baseball yeah, team. Good game. Man, that poor kid that had to come in and pitch at the last second. Yeah. But tip of the cap to that young man. If y'all didn't see that game, that pitcher, the the starting pitcher, he had some fun with him. Mean, this kid, I don't know if he had pitched at all throughout the whole series. And if you'd have looked at his face, you'd have never known or seen fear on him. Because he should have no fear, this, this kid. Uh, I, I'm just really proud of that, that team. I, I'm really proud of that Lake uh, Mary team, too. But I think, going back to what I was going to say, I think Bernie fed into that, I think, because they did so good and won so big getting there. I think some of that played into it where you think you're not going to get beat. Because uh, they were leading for a while there. But yeah. uh, you know, the other That's team came. the game, right? Absolutely. Then I watched that Chinese Taipei and Lake uh, Mary uh, championship game. Lake Mary was down eight innings in the bottom eight inning. They, they ended up winning that ball game two to one. That That's the kind of ball game I like to watch and and those kids, I like watching those kids play ball. That Lake Morton, they had two players on there. One's 5'3", and one's 5'4", okay? One weighed about 170, 173, right. something. You know, one weighed about one, 165, 168. Two boys, they were funny. One of them did that little shuffle, and a little squat type thing. When he got up, he get the bat, and... Uh, it's fine. Uh, so what was your analysis of the game? So, which one? The Florida State, Georgia Tech game. I, I, game. I, I was not surprised. Uh, I thought it was a good game. I think Florida State went in there believing they were the better team and all that hype they had gotten last year. Because I agree with Saban and, um, and what's his name, uh, that Florida State, the, the way the – the voting turned out last year, I think, was probably pretty right. I think they got 100%. Yeah, so... Uh, the, some of what happened against Georgia, 63-3, the largest margin of loss in college football football bowl history. All of the kids that opted out, because right, that's the excuse they're going to say, well, we had all these people that didn't want to play. Georgia didn't either. Georgia didn't get an invite to the CFP, and they weren't an number one team. Beginning to end, they learned the wire. They were number one. They played the whole season. And, the, and then they lost the CFP, or they lost the ACC championship game. Boom. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that Saban has some good comments about that. You watched game day with Saban on game day? I did. I, I thought that was pretty good, too. I, I thought he did a good job. And I think the best thing that happened in game day was him and uh, McAfee. Yes, sir. They they added a little bit more to it. We'll find it. I'm up. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, Coach Corso fits in next week. Well, in the last couple of seasons, he's been making appearances here and there. Right. right. Certain segments he'll pop in and, you know. And, and again, credit and kudos to ESPN and College Game Day for picking him and not throwing him the ball because he is very much beloved. You see, as I love Corso, it's going to be fun to see him interacting with Saban and uh, and McAfee. I think that's going to be, a, especially in the end when they start doing their picks and stuff like that. I, I like Corso when he picks his, does his hat pick and all that kind of stuff. But I, I thought it was good. And Miss Terry was was in the audience there at game day. Yes, she was. I didn't, I didn't know that until a little bit later on, but. Uh, I, I thought it was good. I, I think it's the best thing to happen to ESPN for for game day in a long time. Just 
I think it'll bring some excitement and different perspective. And one thing about Coach, I'll, you always know, but he's not afraid to tell you what he thinks. He's not afraid to shirt loading you. Yep. Now, yeah. Now, asking him to do anything otherwise would would not be homeless. Yeah, we have one more I think maybe it have a little bit of truth to it. Somebody asked him why he's not picking Alabama, you know, and, so, and somebody said something that that's his way of getting them motivated. Oh, not, yeah. not not necessarily in those words or stuff like that, but. But he's he's been cagey, but he's been very nuanced in his praise of any team. Yeah. And, and I he think, doesn't want to give him that rec poison. Yeah, and I think he had it right. People got to beat Georgia. You beat Georgia, I, I think you, you'll be all right. Yeah, and well, as we went back and looked at our schedule, I, I circled a couple of games. We got to play Georgia in September. If we can beat Georgia, we're going to be okay. If we can stay close in that game, that will be okay. But Georgia plays Clemson. That, that's going to be a good game right there. I think that's going to give us an idea of what Georgia has. Because Clemson's going to bring it. Dabo Sweeney's going to. He, he's Don't not, know if Clemson's going to have the game, too. Exactly. Then um, I think the other game is Texas and Georgia. We're going to find out what Texas is made out of. And uh, we'll see. Those are the three games I think Georgia has to worry about. It's Clemson, Alabama, and us. Depends on how they play. Because one of the things that Saban made a comment about, it's not about your record. I think there's a lot more to it than that. You know, the, the strength that's of the schedule. Yeah, you know, that's a that's, and I think they're going to probably look at that stuff a little bit more this year. Also, what do you think about all the picks? I said, have you looked at all the picks? I think people was on the we already started week one. Yeah, but so that's that's four plus one, so it's the number four logically get the, the four seats and for you know, one through four, which get them in the first round. So the SEC champion, the Big Ten champion, the Big 12, and who's the other conference? Big Ten, SEC. Big 12, SEC. Act 12. It's not 12. Well, they got Oregon, Ole Miss, Texas, and Notre Dame in the first round. Uh, uh, oh, first round. East, I forgot. It's the ACC. ACC, ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, and CC. Those are the powerful. And the fifth one is for, I guess, the independents. But in the, this is not everybody, but as a general rule, they got Georgia, Ohio State, Miami. And we'll find out pretty quick here this weekend what Miami's going to do. Uh, what they're going to be like. Arizona, Oregon, Ole Miss, Texas. Alabama, Notre Dame, Penn State, Missouri, and Liberty. I was, I think Saban was talking about Liberty. Sure was. Liberty was on his or somebody else's um, rocket, Indeed. if you would. I was looking at two or three a while ago. I only printed out one, but Liberty is in there. So it's going to be interesting to see. And that's court. just because of their record. It's not because of who they play. It, exactly. And I'm surprised the AP has not revealed its top 25. Florida State is still ranked 10th. Yeah. So here's my question. Where do you think this shakes out? Because Georgia Tech isn't in the 10 team. So you have a 2 10 team play an unranked team and lose. I was still earlier, and people are still. That, that's the downside of, of all of this. You can say what you want to say and all these people by doing all this stuff, but they still have opinions. And I think your your personal beliefs probably sway your thinking. That's why I think guys like Saban, Coach Saban, and coaches like that probably should be on that selection committee. Um, I, I, maybe. I don't know. Um, he's, he's too close to the program, I think, Bill, to be objective in it. I, I don't know. I think he would be. I uh, I think I think there's a lot of coaches that be pretty objective. I don't think you, should, you know, uh, Bobby Bowden say I, I think guys like that would be very objective, uh, and they bring more to say. That's what I, I like about Saban being on, on game day. I think he's going to bring more 
Well, let's Man, take a that's... close to it of what he's talking about. He's talking about game itself rather than what people feel. What do you think about Seamus being on game day? Seamus, is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah, he, he was the only one that came on game for me. Yeah, he called Georgia he, Tech. He was, he was the only one that picked Georgia Tech. I yeah. didn't know who the heck Seamus was, but uh, uh, he, he, seemed, he seemed to be knowledgeable enough. Yeah. So, but yeah, I've I've seen him wrestle. He he's he's all right. I like wrestling, but I understand. These people call it wrestling. They don't call it wrestling. They know where you're from. Your grandpa said wrestling. Okay. So, um, so this so one. That's one page. of the things I miss about you and him. You never got oh. a chance to go to a wrestling match with him. You you would have had fun. You would have enjoyed that. Oh, with your dad. Oh, yeah. So this one web page called Fan Sighted, they were thinking Florida State's going to fall all the way to ninth. So Fan Sighted happens Georgia, State, Oregon, Texas, Alabama at fifth, Old Miss at six, Notre Dame seven, Penn State eight, Michigan nine, Missouri two. And the last ten, you're talking about LSU, Clemson, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Florida State, Miami, Florida State, Texas A&M. Well, we're going to find out this weekend what a and is made out of, too. They're playing, what, Notre Dame? Thank them. Yeah, uh, yeah. They play Notre Dame this weekend. Yeah. So, so week one we have West Carolina, NC State, Linden, Lindenwood against Kansas, Murray State, Missouri, Southern Utah, Utah, Temple at Oklahoma, Clemson, Georgia. It's oh, gonna man. be a good game. Coming oh, right out the gate. Yeah. Penn State, West Virginia. I think that's gonna be a good game. It's going to be a good test yeah, for Penn and, State. And what's his name was predicted West Virginia to do? Yeah, that, he was. Uh, then you got Illinois State against Iowa, Chattanooga against Tennessee, South Dakota State, Oklahoma State, Colorado State, Texas, Akron, Ohio State, Miami, and Florida. Ooh, it's going to be a good game, too. Mm-hmm. We're going to see what, what your coach. Billy Napier. Uh, yeah, Napier. We're going to see what Billy Napier's got. UT uh-huh. Martin, Kansas at Kansas State. Uh, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers at Alabama. Furman at Ole Miss. Notre Dame. Man, that's the, that's the third game. I didn't watch. That's going to be a game. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. But you know what? They're going to have to bounce back and forth between the USC and LSU. Yeah. That's going to be another good game, too. Not a lot of talk about LSU this year, but don't count them out. Well, yeah, so many other teams are kind of like stealing their thunder, and and Saban was very effusive in his uh, comments towards LSU. He, what did he say? You shake a tree and then excellent ball players fall. Yeah, that was a far tall recruiting ground. I will say them. I'm ready for some football. And this gonna be good. We saw what Thursday night. We got some games Thursday. Then we got Friday. I think Friday. I can't remember about Friday. I know we got Saturday. And we got Sunday. And we got one. Like Monday, right? Labor Day. So Thursday, we'll start to Carolina, NC State at six, Lindenwood in Kansas at seven, Murray State in Missouri at seven. Um, Southern Utah, Utah is at eight. Temple, Oklahoma is on Friday. That's the only Friday game. Yeah, the rest I'm, are I'm I'm looking forward to watching that game. I don't the only game. The Oklahoma temp, uh, Temple game. I'm more interested to see what Oklahoma's got. Yeah, you yeah. want to see what they got in the town. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know that I'm going to show you a whole lot. But Temple, see, that's, that's the downside or upside. It depends on your point of view. Everybody's talking about, well, they won't have a problem with Temple. But you know what? The boys from Temple don't believe that stuff. So they're going to come uh, in just and ask play. ask Michigan about Appalachian State. Exactly. So. It's, it's going to be good. Hey, but, it's, uh, gonna, uh, it's Baylor about UTSA. You know what? Baylor better watch out. All right. I think UTSA is, is going to be like Alabama this year. They lost a lot of players. They lost a quarterback. Um, but they got that big tight end coming back. And I, I think the quarterbacks that were back up last year did a pretty good job. I think the defense is going to be pretty strong. I just love Jeff Trailer. I think he is a, just a phenomenal coach. And from the point of view that I think the players buy into him and he buys into the players. And when you have that kind of relationship, they can be hard to beat. And I, I feel the same way about uh, Texas State. 
the coach they got there, you know, they lost their quarterback. But I, I think Texas State's going to be good. I think that's going to be a heck of a ball game when uh, UTSA and Texas State. I agree. Yeah. Well, Unfortunately, Saturday, all those good games until at night. We have a 6 o'clock game, the Notre Dame game. Uh, so we're at 6. Uh, Notre Dame A&M is at 6.30, and the LSU game is at 6.30. Yeah. So we're not going to be able to watch those two games. Well, there's only one I'll watch, and I just get the scores and stuff from ESPN off my phone. I just bring up that app, and I can check the scores and stuff. And you switch back and forth on commercials and, and see what that. Uh, the, the next week against South Florida, that's another night game. It's at PM. Mm-hmm. We don't so, get an afternoon game until Wisconsin. And that's that's an early game, right? Like one o'clock. 11, or, yeah. 11 and then o'clock. we go back to a six thirty game again. So maybe we get together for the Wisconsin game. That sounds good. I think that's going to be a good game. I think that's the game for us that we're going to find out what we're made of. Yeah, that's going to be a good test because we we roll right into Georgia. I think Wisconsin is is like a lot of those teams that. They're good seven and three, seven and four, eight and three type type things. They don't always get the recognition, and they probably don't always get recruit the best players. But they, I think, they're pretty consistent. Yeah, they're they're slightly better than middle of the road in the Big Ten. Yeah. So if, if we go in, I think we're playing we're playing them at home. We play them on the road. Now we're playing them in Wisconsin. Yeah, we're playing them up at Camp Randall. Yeah. So when they're going there, think you got it because them boys will show up. And once you get behind and see that, I think that's what happened with Georgia Tech and uh, Florida State. They played from behind a lot of that ball game. And it's, it's hard to play catch up. But the other side, don't want you to play catch up. Yeah. yeah. So but it's, it's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm ready for it. Let me see where we're at here. We are at 26 minutes. Well, before we go, you got anything to wrap up? I'm going to just give a shout out for all those families uh, in that Afghan withdrawal. Uh, those 13 who gave it all in their families. Just say a little prayer for them and keep them in your heart. You know, that's a sad day for those families. So. This is what, uh, the third anniversary? Third anniversary, yeah. So we need to keep them in our hearts and prayers. I got one more thing for you. I got a list here of the greatest generals. Greatest what? Greatest generals. And military it's generals, okay? The greatest generals? Uh-huh. Okay. George Washington, Andrew Jackson, Grant, Sherman, Sheridan, Lee, Blackjack Pershing, Douglas MacArthur, George Marshall, Dwight Eisenhower, Patton, and Bradley. Those I don't have to disagree with. What do you think about Ryan well, Ridgeway? I don't disagree with the way, but Schwarzkopf and Westmoreland. What do you think about those two? Right. I would agree with that too. How about Schwarzkopf? Yeah, I, 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 me too. I think there's some others. I, just, I didn't read all the articles and stuff like that, but I just came across that in there. What can um, Drew Marshall. Oh, yeah. Who was? Yeah. Who uh, Marshall? But, but I thought Ridgeway. I thought Matthew Ridgeway was a was a good general in career. I just don't decisive he was. The Ridgeway. Yeah, and three. The definitely made a lot of money. Army was just about annihilated, and we came up with a plan to land at Ensign and draw the Chinese and North Koreans away. I think it was time for Smith to be rescued. Uh, the rest of them I pretty much agree with. I thought Blackjack Pershing, uh, uh, MacArthur, Marshall. Marshall, you don't hear a lot of talk about, but he was a very brilliant person. He and Eisenhower, I thought, made a, made a heck of a team in World War II. Um, since you mentioned Black Jack Pershing, um, I'm going to give you some names of future generals. There's certain under Black Jack Pershing. George Stephen Murphy, Dwight mm-hmm. Eisenhower, Omar Bradley, and Leslie McNair, George Clinton, and Douglas McKenzie. All served 
in World War I under Black Jack Cody. He was a, a general's general, as we used to say, he's a soldier's soldier. And he was given the rank of General Blue Enemies. Yeah. It is the highest military rank in the United States. Yeah. And only one other person has been named General of the Armies. And it was, was General Washington. Right. So this grade can be equated to a six-star general because the general of the army is a five-star, but there is no six-star designation. And from what I had read, the military and whatnot wanted to give him the rank of field like our European brothers and sisters, but they did not meet rank at the same time because it had too much tie into the Germans. Yeah. But I, so that's I, I, when I, they came up with General of the Armin Porter. Yeah. Because he already yeah. was General I just, I just saw that arc. That arc I thought was kind of interesting when I, when I looked at it. And Sherwin and Sheridan, Lee and Grant, all in that area back in that time in the warfare and stuff like that. And so it was interesting. I like to read about that kind of stuff. Anyway, you're right. We're at 31, so I'll probably call it a day. Uh -huh. and, uh, I want to give a shout out to your two cousins uh, and find out when we get them on board here. Yeah, we can try. We can try last weekend, I think. Let me, uh, I'll reach out to them and find out what I'm sure Sunday's going to be the best day for them. So. Yeah, and then doing it's football on Saturday. Yeah, then, uh, so that'd be interesting. Okay. All right. Have a good one. Stay safe. And we got 40% chance of rain passing through this area. So I'm going to go back to peak in a minute. Hope we got a little sprinkle or two. All right. Yeah. All right. Take care, Dad. Take care. Right. Take care, buddy. Y'all be safe. All right. Love you guys. Love you too. Love you. Love you, buddy. Yeah.